welcome back to the Burning Word Teaching Ministry. Uh, this is the Word of God that burns in our hearts. Uh, just to start, I just want to share with you a verse that I found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 9 says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. We begin this time with stanza number 13 of Psalm 119. We have already covered more than half of this wonderful psalm, and now we find this beautiful stanza where we can perceive the devotion for God in His Word, a devotion that has become a deep, loving relationship between the psalmist and the Word of God. No matter where you are in this uh, journey as a believer, I want you to be provoked by this segment to incline your heart towards the Word of God, which is why we are sharing Psalm 119. In this psalm, we find out what the Word of God means for the believer, as well as how we should be responding to the Word of God and why we should love it so much. In this way, we begin this stanza by reading each verse, beginning with the verse 97, and it goes like this how i love your law it is my meditation all the day your commandments makes me wiser than my enemies for they are ever mine i have more insight than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation i understand more than those who are old because i have complied with your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way so that I might keep your word. I have not turned aside from your judgments for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. From your precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. The last one, that was uh, verse 104. So he says, how I love your law. And by saying the word law um, includes all of the word of God, right? The question I would like to put before you today is, do you love the word of God? And I ask this today because in recent times there has been a growing criticism even within certain Christian circles about whether we as Christians should worship the Trinity of God, that's a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, choosing to include the Bible as an object of worship. It's interesting, eh? And regarding this, uh, it should be clarified that the Bible is not another person in the Trinity because then it will not be a Trinity, right? <laughs> and therefore, it must not be worship. However, <clears throat> everything we know about God is through the Scriptures. If you have ever loved someone from distance, um, as it was the case between my wife and I who spent six long years in separate countries before marriage, you end up knowing the other person through the letters and begin uh, to have a special affection for those letters and cards, etc., etc., right? In a certain way, the same happens with the Bible. This letter, the Bible, tells us that the Lord sustains us according to His Word, Psalm 119, verse 116. He saves us according to His Word, Psalm 118, verse 41. He preserves us. On a, um, verse 107, he comforts us. And uh, verse 76, he's gracious. Um, verse 58, he strengthens us. On verse 28, he delivers us. On verse 170, give us understanding. All of this according to his word. 
God's word is not just a label on a book. It is God speaking. Therefore, I will dare to say that those who criticize that the Bible should not be the object of our worship, which it shouldn't be, right? Since uh, we shouldn't bow, bow ourselves before it to worship it. And they, they do not know it and they do not love it as the Bible says to love it. <laughs> so this verse tells us of the deep affliction, uh, aff affection that the author has for the word of God. And, and you know what? How foreign is to hear these words today, right? Um, how I love your law. The modern uh, Christian culture tells us um, uh, that worship songs are the ones to be loved mainly because most of them out there are highly emotional. Uh, I'm not saying that we shouldn't worship the Lord with songs, but um, I think there should be a more biblical reference in them. When that is the case, and we have a lot of Psalms and a lot of Bible verses uh, inside of the um, uh, songs, we find powerful songs, and, and our hearts will resonate with them. How I love your law. We see in this line the central idea of the whole stanza. And we see in this verse how meditating on the word of God makes the psalmist wise. He confesses that um, he loves the word of God not only in here, but in so many other verses. It happens in verse 47, 48, 113, 127, 140, 159, 163, 165, and 167. It is evident that God is trying to communicate to us how we, sh we should respond to his word. For the true believer, the word of God is food, medicine, light, comfort, strength. The word of God is life. It is really, is it really a surprise? That the that the psalmist loves so much the word of God. Maybe some of you are wondering what is it like really to love the word of God. The truth is that uh, no one can force himself to love something or even someone, but you can cultivate a love for someone or something. And the first step that I can encourage you with, based on my own experience is that you come intentionally in prayer before the Lord and ask Him with all your heart to give you a love for His Word, to stir up in your heart something so you can love the Word of God. For some people, the next step is discipline. They know that in order to cultivate this love, they'll need to be disciplined. Invest time and set the Bible in front of them Frequently, daily, as it says on uh, Psalm 119, verse 30. Perhaps the next step is to give the scriptures your attention and key. Verse 97 says, it is my meditation all the day. Perhaps uh, part of the meditation is having an e attentive to perceive the voice of the Lord in the heart. Saying that, We love the Word of God. It's not just a pretty line to paste on social media, but it is a reality about our lives. It is my meditation all the day. These words show the evidence that there is really a love for God's Word. For those who love the Word of God, His thoughts are always reflecting on the Word of God. They're always thinking, you know, memorizing it, showing the Word of God. And, and this happens in the deepest part of the heart. Your, law, uh, your love for God goes hand in hand with your love for God's Word. You cannot separate them. You cannot love God and be indifferent to the Word of God. In fact, if you are lukewarm or indifferent towards uh, the Lord Jesus, it is because you are lukewarm with respect to the Word of God. On the other hand, if you are passionate about God, it is because you are also passionate about His Word. Spurgeon said, backsliders usually have the Bibles full of dust. 
The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 21 says, Your ears will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, whenever you turn to the right or to the left. There is also a component of obedience here as well. And um, <clears throat> although uh, God's word expresses that deep love verse after verse, There are some verses more difficult to accept than others. We, we commit to read the Bible every day, but then we stop. We struggle when, when uh, uh, we get um, to those verses, those parts that uh, we rather skip. Because sometimes what God has to say makes us uncomfortable, right? And here's the other factor. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the elementary teachings, about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Take into account the words on this previous verse, the words living and press on. This means that it is up to us, it's up to you, it's up to me. At some point, uh, we must say to ourselves, starting from today, I'm going to do whatever it takes to grow spiritually and discover God's plan for my life, even if it makes me uncomfortable. Right? I need to be stirred up. I need to be told the truth, and even when the truth is not what I want to hear. As we come humbly before God, asking the Holy Spirit to give us an understanding to comprehend His Word, we will begin to feel more appreciation and affection for the Word of God. We will value it for all the good things that it brings to our lives, according to what we just mentioned earlier. And we will be more grateful for it. This love for the Word of God comes from a humble heart before Him. A heart that says, submit to the authority of the Word of God. A heart that does not resist the word that does not rebel against the word and it is not constantly trying to negotiate with the word of God but a humble heart that says speak Lord your servant listens a deep affection for the word of God is one of the most notable marks in the of the new birth and a healthy Christian life so the question for you today is this Um, is this your testimony today? Can you put yourself in the place of the psalmist and confess from the heart that you have this deep love in your soul for the Word of God? However you answer these questions will act as a thermometer that will indicate how warm or cold your heart is with respect to God. Perhaps uh, these responses are telling you that you need a new heart, a heart that is sensitive to the Word of God. Perhaps you need to start over and come to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, here I am. In humility, I ask you to renew me, to revive me, to ignite in me a burning fire, to stir up this burning fire for you and your word today. I encourage you to raise this prayer today. Well, on this occasion, we only cover the first verse of this stanza, and I invite you to join us again in a new segment of The Burning Word, Soon, God Willing. Don't forget to um, give this video a like and to share it. God bless you.